Hi, Chris. Hi, Tim. Four points from the last two games. Is that just the reaction you were looking for from the the defeats against Liverpool and City? And has it been a, a feature of your season, reacting in, in the right way at key points? Yeah, I thought... Uh, I read somewhere because... I do now and again that our, our away record was in tatters <laughs> because uh, we got beat at the Etihad and uh, we got beat at Anfield. So there was uh, there was not much complaining about the results uh, over those two games, maybe the, the Liverpool performance, but there was never any sort of head scratching and um, and, and and worrying. Um, I've always you looked at the fixture list and it was going to be, and it still is now. Um, and it always is, I think, right the way through the Premier League. The fixture list is is, is tough, and um, there's no 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 given games for anybody, let alone the team that's that's been promoted. Um, so as, as far as I'm concerned, always a, a reaction. Of course, yeah, you don't want two defeats to turn into three and four. And I said before, um, we talked about that and. And what would our mentality be like if that did happen? Um, but first and foremost, let's not try to let it happen. And uh, we certainly didn't do that. Valuable win against West Ham. I, I believe we deserved to win the game, even though the bit at the end was was a little bit controversial. We did enough, especially second half, to win that game. And um, yeah, I, I believe we deserved the result on on on, on Saturday. Um, not too. Um, uh, overjoyed about the middle bit of our performance uh, uh, at the Emirates but certainly for the first 15 minutes and the last 15 minutes we're very very dominant and I think if you look at the clear cut chances we've had the better chances and more clear cut and and uh, and on another particular day um, we, we win the game um, so four points uh, at any level is good um, and certainly uh, uh, at this level we'll, 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 we'll gladly take so a lot of people might have looked at the run of fixtures that you're in the middle at the moment and thought this might be where they have a wobble but you managed to avoid that as I said before I, I've, I've never looked at any part of this fixture list from the moment it came out in, in June and just thought yeah comfortable it isn't and uh, how, how can I you know uh, with all the things that I've just said you picked up a lot of points against the top sides this season I know some newly promoted sides look at these games as a free hit but it appears to be different here. And is that why you think you've done so well? It's just our mentality. It's my mentality towards the players. It's their mentality towards uh, the next game and the opponents. That hasn't changed and it, and, it, and it can't change. It's our standards that we've set. I keep saying, you know, we, we, we look at ourselves first and foremost, look at our performance, um, you know, and, uh, and analyse it there and strive and drive for more. I think that's, from my, my point of view, that's the only way we're going to improve. Um, I'm not saying that I'm dissatisfied with with performances. I'm not saying I'm, you know, I'm, I'm looking at the points total and thinking, you know, it should be a lot more or a lot healthier. You know, it's, it's I'm realistic, um, but I'm ambitious and I'm driven and we all are as a group. And uh, I don't think that we get the results that we've had over the three years, and we don't get the performances that we and the and the results that we've had in the Premier League if if we're not looking to the next game and um, and uh, and looking for that next result. So that's the mentality of the group. Um, it's it's not for the faint-hearted, uh, and I've said it said it before, and I'll say it again. You know, if you want an easy ride, don't step in don't step into our football club and don't step into our changing room because. I'm demanding and uh, and they're demanding of each other. Man City's are attacking players are firing at the moment on, on all cylinders. Does this when make... have they, when have they not been? <laughs> <laughs> Has there been a period where they've not? <laughs> but in particular at the moment, Aguero is scoring a lot of goals and they, they were destroying teams for, for, uh, Cheers, for a little Tim. period. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me. But does it mean that you're going to have to produce one of your best performances of the season to get a result? Yeah, of course. And we did do over over at the Etihad, uh, even though, as I said, our, our away record was was uh, was broken for the first time. But the performance levels were were, were excellent. Out of possession, 
fabulous, really good, uh, good shape to us. Um, they always can produce something out of nothing. We limited them to, to very, very little, which was really pleasing from my point of view. The, the players did a, 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 a fabulous job uh, in, in terms of concentration, discipline, organisation, shape. But still, we had a threat going the other way, and we've, we've got to get that balance right again on uh, on, on Tuesday. Uh, maybe a little bit more adventurous, a little bit more aggressive with our starting positions, especially uh, because we're at home. But it's nothing's going to change too much. Um, I understand the quality that we're up against, the the, the manager and the, and the group of players, whatever players they put out, whatever shape they play. Four three three seat, three centre halves, four two three one, whatever whatever shape it is, they've got incredible players. You know, I've got to say it was. Uh, I enjoyed watching my team uh, at the Etihad. I thought they were, they were excellent, and uh, you know, up close and personal to, to to magnificent players. You know, Kevin De Bruyne and you know uh, Aguero. You know, and, and and everybody connected with the side, the players that they've got. You know, they're just world class players. So yeah, we're going to have to play really well, uh, but we want to we want to make it competitive. Um, we, want, we want to be aggressive in our our attitude and our approach. Uh, but we understand they're going to have the ball and they're going to have the, the lion's share of possession. Um, and but we like to think that we can we can co- cause a problem going the other way, and we're not just going to be sat in for, for ninety minutes like we were, like we like we like we didn't. Sorry, uh, to, uh, uh, the game uh, over, over at their place. You've already talked about the the challenges of the transfer window. Have your plans changed? at all throughout this month have you had to move on from maybe some of your original targets and are you still looking to get two or three in yeah we're still looking I work with the you know with the board and um, if I don't think the, the players are available or the ones that we want, want to go and get or can't go and get from financial reasons uh, we move on and always is, there's a list of players so we'll try to add to make us strong into the second part of the season but always trying to maximise what I've, what I've been given uh, by the board but like I said if it's, if, if it's not there I'm not just going to bring in players for the sake of it we'll, we'll carry on with what we've got uh, we all understand that we can't stand still in terms of investment can't stand still in terms of improving uh, the group uh, improving the quality of the group. I'm no different to, to any other other manager, not just in the Premier League, but possibly at every football club and down the country. We're always looking to do that. Improve the players on the training ground and improve the players that, that come through the door to make you a better and stronger team. And uh, we've always have done that, and we, we, we certainly need to do that at this level. Is there a chance you might not get anyone in if you didn't consider there was value for money in the market? Yeah, I don't. I don't see, you know, I, I think one of the things that, that I've always tried to do is, is, is well, I've always done it, is, is I, I, treat, I treat the club's money as if it's my own. And um, I know some uh, managers don't do that, will we'll always, and you hear it, you know, get as much money out of them as possible and tip, tip them upside down. I've, I've never had that relationship with, 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 with any football club or any any uh, board or, or, or chairman I'll ask the question always to improve um, but uh, not signing players for the sake of it um, And uh, but I'd like to think that that trust and that re- relationship gets uh, uh, is re- reciprocated uh, the other way um, by the way I, uh, I deal with those matters so still hopeful yeah, I believe we'll we'll get um, one or two definitely in in the, in, in in the next week. But the, <clears throat> it's always Tim, as we all know, a moving market um, in terms of you know players players coming in and uh, and you know I can't I can't sit here and say that any of my players might uh, might not move on as well. You know, and ones that maybe we don't want to move on. Um, that's just how football is. Um, so. We always have to be ready um, and, uh, and and quickly react to um, to any business that uh, that happens with it, whether it's outs or whether it's ins. Have you had any offers for your players? No, 
I want to keep everybody. Yeah, or, you know, we we'll want to keep all the boys that we've, we've talked about. There's certain players that we've we've talked about that will will be playing the football elsewhere next year. But the main actors, um, which is quite a few of them, uh, I want to to keep and build and um, and uh, and be part of. Hopefully, you know, a, a decent future ahead of us. Uh, Chris, David McGoldrick, is uh, is he definitely out for tomorrow evening? No, uh, we will assess today, uh, was over the weekend to, to recover, well, so we will assess today and uh, um, and uh, and make that decision to, today for, for, for tomorrow night's game. Any other injury concerns from the weekend? No, no, no everybody came through it, um, so um, yeah, 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 again, uh, delighted with the... With, uh, with the opportunity and the ability to uh, to pick from uh, fit from a full squad, um, you mentioned about players who are in contract discussions not hanging about after the weekend. Is that something the ongoing sort of contract discussions that could affect your business in the in the transfer window this month? No, these uh, players that uh, for no other reason uh, will be rewarded for the for the performances, um, of course. Um, we want to show those players that uh, that we want to we want them to be part of what's moving forward. For me, it's more of a reward than a than a protection. And I've said before, we're never protected. Um, if if uh, if somebody bigger comes in and and offers us money, uh, and off- offers players uh, uh, salaries that we can't get anywhere near and um, then there's a decision to be made so uh, it really doesn't really affect anything and I've been given a given a budget to work with uh, maximise that if I can and if I can't I should imagine that will roll over into the summer because certainly we're going to have to do business in the summer it is all always about lifting the group and improving the group and not, not standing still had you expected some of those sort of contract issues to have been sorted a bit quicker than, than they have been? Yeah, but I understand the modern world of, uh, of football agents as well and re- their relationships with players. I've said it for, for, for long enough. I, I always believe that players should take ownership of, 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 of their own careers, but they pay agents to, to guide them. Um, and sometimes realistic and sometimes unrealistic so um, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised yeah uh, uh, but um, that's the way that's the way uh, the modern game is you talked a little bit about killer instinct as well at the weekend at times being just missing within bits of the game is that something you feel like you've got enough within the squad as a whole at the moment, enough killer instinct to win those matches when you are ahead and when you do make those chances? Well, we're certainly making chances. Um, we have created chances. Um, we've got players that can finish, of course, um, but the best players in the world miss chances. So uh, I understand that's the hardest thing to, uh, to complete. Uh, but... I, I, I'm more than happy with with what what we've got at the top of the pitch, be, considering the football club where it's at. I think I can say to you, if I wanted somebody to be ultra clinical, um, I'll try and go to possibly their centre forward who's playing for them tomorrow night. Um, I'm not so sure that uh, that uh, Sheffield United might be uh, a destination for him um, in the, in the near future. But we're realistic. We, we've we've got players that are coming through the championship that that are learning, um, are going to be better for the experience. Um, but um, as long as they're taking the responsibility, um, I'm okay with that. And um, you know, I'm sure they'll improve through the Premier League experience, which I think we have to realise. You know, these they are still young boys. The likes of you know Callum Robinson and um, and Lease and um, and Ollie, first season, first 2021 games as a Premier League player. So they'll always improve and um, and, and, and learn and uh, I'm sure they will do along the way. Do you feel it's a, a lot to expect of the club for the, the team to keep that performance level just so high as it has been throughout the season or is that the nature of just what you expect from your team? 
I believe there's two different aspects to it. I think from a supporter's point of view, they should be cheering this group of players on that they've, uh, as, as, as much as they've ever cheered any group of players on in possibly the history of our football club. As a manager's point of view, it's always my, my job to drive them forward and drive them on. So uh, I think that's that's pretty simple and simplistic way of looking at it. Mel Besic made a couple of good appearances off the bench recently. How close is he to, to getting a few starts for you? Yeah, pushing. I'm going to have a look at the team. And uh, always walk out and, uh, uh, and you know, question myself have I picked the right team and, and, and afterwards look at it and have I picked my right team and not always do don't think any manager always 100% always gets it spot on we try to get it as, as, as near as we possibly can so uh, we'll always look at that uh, and look at the fixture coming up and obviously um, you know going forward as well on performances um, and shapes and what gives us the best opportunity of getting a result against Manchester City so yeah, there's some, some uh, always some difficult decisions, uh, and um, and yet yeah, again, I'll, I'll as soon as the, the 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 final whistle went against Arsenal, it was, you know, on the coach back, it was uh, it was quickly anal- analysing the game, and reflecting back on the game on, on on Saturday, but looking straight away into Sunday and into Sunday morning, up bright and early, uh, preparing for the Manchester City game. Only 23 days since you last played them. Is that a factor going into this with the memories sort of being fresh from that day and, you, you know, a couple of decisions didn't go your way at the Etihad? Well, we couldn't control those. We were disappointed with them at, at, at the time, especially the, the build-up and the lead-up to the goal. As I said, I think that uh, <clears throat> there might have been some more noise um, if it had been flipped, flipped on its head the, the other way. But I, I understand that. There is a pecking order in, uh, in the game. And uh, and we have to earn the right to 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 move that forward on our behalf. Uh, but the similarity, I suppose, uh, yeah. But it really counts for nothing on on on, on Tuesday night. We've still got to put in a really strong performance um, on and off the pitch um, to to make it as difficult as possible for, to to uh, an outstanding team. You know, I think the the longer the season goes on. The, it looks as if the, the the top two are going to run away with it, and um, and you can see uh, by their performances um, um, and the ability and what they have, um, totally understandable. Liverpool are obviously clearly ahead at the top and and the the best team at the moment in the country. That sort of has taken a little bit of the focus away from Man City in a way, but surely they. They've still got that, that quality, haven't they? You know, 198 points over the last two years. You know, people might be looking at this thinking, oh, you know, they're not Liverpool, so... Well, it's taken Liverpool five years to get there, hasn't it? And uh, I think people have got to recognise that. We just talked about it, you know, today. And, uh, you know, Manchester United versus Liverpool and Manchester United are on that journey, aren't they? They're starting that journey with, with the manager and the young players coming in and a few injuries and trying to get it right. It takes a long time. Uh, it takes a long time. It takes a lot of money. And, and Man City have just, you know, you sometimes have one of those seasons where you get a, get a few injuries, you get a few players that maybe don't reach the heights that they've reached previously. But form temporary and class permanent and, and all sayings like that. And, uh, and they've certainly got a, a, a tremendous amount of ability. Um, and, uh, you know, still in what? All competitions. Um, of course, I think everybody will look at the the, uh, the points difference between the team at number one and number two at the moment, and uh, it's got to be a hell of a swing for 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 anything to change in that. But um, we're we're still uh, approaching the game uh, and taking on a taking on a team that's as you said points total over the last two years, players that they've got, players that they've got coming back, uh, manager that they've got, and. I think you even saw, like, you know, the, when they played us, you know, when the second one went in, it wasn't sort of, yeah, we've just beat Sheffield United. You know, we've won a game of football and, you know, the demands that the manager puts on their players is huge, regardless of, I should imagine, any day, uh, any game, any competition. Um, you see, as I said, you see his attitude in, in, in the EFL Cup. They want to win all the time. Um, and uh, you don't get... As I've said before, you don't get 
his career, his 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 results as a, as a player and as much more so than a, than a manager, without being driven from a day to day. I think one of the big sort of uh, vibes that you get out of Manchester City is that the manager is at it every day and his staff are at it every day. There's some stuff, as I said, you can't control injuries uh, and, and a few bits of unfortunate players being at being being out. But the stuff that he can control, he, he will do and has done to obviously great effect. You obviously you've both achieved a lot in the game, taking different paths and at, at, at different levels. But is it that drive and that will to win that you see as the sort of similarity between you? I just, and I'm, I'm myself. I, I can't think you can ever compare my career to to somebody who's won, you know, got 198 points in the Premier League and won the Champions League four times and everything else. Oh, I don't, you know, it's, it's more miles apart, a million miles apart for, as far as I'm concerned. It's my career and what, what I've tried to do and tried to affect it. And he's he's, he's had a, a, an incredible career. Uh, and what he's trying to do, trying to affect his career. Out of all of them, out of the Man City squad, if you could pick one this January, who'd you take? Carl Walker. He's <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, in the position that you're looking for. Where, 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 are we? Are we looking for that <laughs> position? Well, you said you won't cover at the back. <laughs> um, it, it's just, uh, well... Of course, the connection and I think the world of him. He's he's uh, a, a top player, brilliant career, and uh, uh, and, a, and a and a right good lad as well, Lo- local boy. Uh, but yeah, I mean, all the players are, are, are incredible players. I thought one of the you know one of the classiest things I've got to say that I've I, that I've uh, I've witnessed this year, and and there has been a cu- couple of times when we've come off the pitch and you, you you wander over to the referee and you bump into a few of the players. There's a couple of words that. Kevin De Bruyne said 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 to us like I'll, I'll keep personal which I thought that's all right class he touched that and uh, I, I've got to say up close and personal to him on the on the night against us he was a, he was an amazing amazing performer um, and I just thought he had the humility as as well you know I wasn't just walking off the pitch another three points and you know we've brushed Sheffield United aside or a, or a promoted club you know he had he had the class to sort of I mean we we uh, we sort of Pass cross, uh, crossed as a, as walking towards the referee to give him some, um, <laughs> so he possibly said it to calm me down a little bit. Um, it still didn't calm me down, uh, but uh, no, he had he had he had the class and humility. Said some uh, some some quite nice things, which I think is, you know, in the heat of a of a Premier League game and a and a, and a tough one for for us. I thought uh, that was that was that was great, but. I'm not just saying it because he because he said those those kind words about our side uh, and about our football club. I just think he's as a as a midfield player, absolute complete midfield player, um, and absolutely got everything. How vital is it that whenever you do have the ball tomorrow night, there's no errors and you make the most of it? Because I mean, Man City 72% possession at the weekend against Palace. Yes, the result didn't go their way, but they do tend to have a lot of the football. Yeah. Um, talked about the organisation and discipline of the side you know we can't afford to make any errors obviously we made an error at Liverpool early on and you saw how much that affected the game you know uh, I thought the good thing about the, the, the Manchester City game is we got a fold in the game and we grew in belief so big start from us from our point of view error free of course and can we take you know the opportunities I know they, they, they're going to be a, a premium but we need to definitely take and I think everybody sees that you know you look at Newcastle versus Chelsea uh, at the weekend dominant performance by Chelsea Lucas had one opportunity at, at the death scored it and it's a, it's a huge three points so when you're playing the big teams you've got to do a lot of things right defensively organisation discipline mentality uh, and then show that little bit of quality that uh, that can you know give you uh, a, a little bit of an, uh, uh, a chance of, of, of getting a result and maybe that was Without the ball, it was was great at Manchester City, and just with the ball, you just looked at that last little bit, and who knows if we'd have if we'd have uh, took an opportunity, would that have affected the game? You know, possibly so, but we we didn't, and uh, we obviously need to learn from that. Thanks, Chris. Cheers, Alan. Hi, Chris. Morning. Um, just a, a quick one from me. You talked about Pep Guardiola, and he's got this obviously deserved reputation, a bit of an aura about him. What's it like to be on the touchline and, and, and pick your wits against him? 
Uh, it's difficult because you're, you're sort of so engrossed in your own your own sort of uh, mindset in terms of trying to affect your team and looking at your t- your team or whatever. Um, but the occasional glance, very animated, very passionate about his team, uh, as as was Jurgen Klopp when we played played Liverpool. Um, involved, you know, heads every every ball, you know, makes every tackle, passes every pass. So I think he's 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 you know he's he's fully engrossed in his in, in his team and trying to work out a way to make his team better just as much as myself and my staff are from, from our point of view. Just on just quickly on uh, just the last word on those contracts. So I'm not asking you to dig sort of anybody out or name anybody. Is there a point? Do you, do you ever put a time scale on anything like this and think? Do you know what? If it's not done now, I can't say players are losing money by the week. So, I, I, yeah. I don't, for me, from my background, I don't really understand that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the, and for, I know there's going to be a bit of negotiation involved. Um, I think we just like to get it all wrapped up as well. I think the players' point of view, they want to get get mm. it wrapped up as well. Uh, yeah, and it will come to a point. Yeah, of course. Um, so that point it isn't isn't here now. But I've got to be. You know, certain and who who wants to be um, part of what we're what we're trying to achieve. I'm still comfortable that you know the majority of them have, have still got you know quite a lot left on the, on the contracts. You know, in, in terms of length, but you know when it's when it does run down or it does get close, yeah, I thought you've got to make a decision from a from a financial point of view as well, from the football club's point of view, um, what we what we might need to do. Uh, on, on that but we're, we're nowhere near that at the moment but as I said from, from my point of view um, I th- and I should imagine from the players point of view you, you know they'll, they'll want to get that done as soon as possible I was going to say and in fairness when you have spoken about it in the past you have said you've you would have an inkling if any of them were looking to move anyway isn't it which they're not so that door is always open <clears throat> and there is absolutely no gun towards pointing towards anybody's Anybody's had to, to stay here. I think the players I like to think the players have had the balls to come and say it's not for me. I want I want to move on. Um, I'm one hundred percent certain that isn't the case with any 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 of the players. It has happened in the past, you know. There's a couple of times where players have come and said this isn't for me, um, and um, we've tried to you know uh, facilitate that and uh, and make those make those deals happen. Still wanting to get the best deal for the football club, but. But really, not, you know, uh, you know, forcing anybody to to stay and, and be here. You know, that doesn't really want to be here. You you said Kyle might not be coming back just yet, but of course, he has said publicly that he would want to finish his career with Sheffield United in the Premier League, which must make you. I mean, it goes to show his connection with the football club, and it is a club that seems to attract that, isn't it? Yeah, I think we said, From, said it last week, didn't we? You know, the amount of people. To end up staying in Sheffield as well as a city as well, you know you still you still walk around certain areas and you still you know see the likes of Chris Waddle and you know and uh, and Gagey and, and and other people like that 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 are from different different areas end up stopping in 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 Sheffield and certainly uh, definitely a connection between you know ex players wanting to come back and uh, you've seen it with Jags mm. and it's a very similar story and uh, the way Phil's come back and been brilliant you know not played a lot of football but you know I can't speak highly enough of of, uh, of of Phil and the effect that he's having on the players and the messages that he's putting out to the players and the experience that he's passing on to uh, to, to the boys that are in their first season of, of Premier League football and somebody who's you know played what what's he played over I'm not sure three four hundred league games in the Premier yeah. League and, um, and 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 England caps as well. So very similar and and Carl's the same. I know um, any opportunity. I know obviously there was a there's a bit of talk last week about Ollie McBurney going back to to, to watch Swansea and 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 Carl's the same and and Harry's, Harry Maguire's the same. So don't count against it. Um, uh, you know you still see his performances uh, and uh, and uh, and how good they are and his, his mentality as well. So. Yeah, he's got my number, as I've said. So uh, any time, uh, might have to have a bit of a discussion on his wages. I was going to say, but he's uh, earned enough and he's won enough, <laughs> hasn't he? Right. So, yeah. Sunday league, isn't it? Sunday yeah. league subs. <laughs> you know, he can uh, he can 
they can uh, they can wash the kit for us and uh, pay as you play, isn't pay it? as you play. Yeah. yeah, he could probably chip in a few for the subs yeah, as well, can, couldn't yeah. he? Yeah, yeah. He might, he, he'll be able to. Yeah, game start. Get, yeah, he's, he's been. Yeah, he's obviously, I don't want to delve too much in no. terms of, of of what's happening from a financial point of view, but uh, could be nice. rightly so, rightly so, uh, deservedly so, um, because. He's a top performer in in the uh, in in the top division in the world. But one one of the things that must be pleasing is that I mean, obviously we mentioned Jurgen Klopp, Pep Guardiola as well. Both have been very sort of complimentary about this football club when they haven't had to be. And when I say that, I mean beyond the usual stuff that you'll get in the pre-match program, you know, uh, or after they've played, you, you get a chance to have a word with them afterwards and speak with them. I know you said you'd obviously had one with. Kevin, but yeah, uh, yeah, we were uh, we had a we had a drink on Saturday uh, with 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 Steve Round uh, and and Mikel Arteta invited us in, which was great. So uh, and uh, yeah, I mean it's it's just part of the game, so um, it's it's good. And you'd rather be, you know, them talking in 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 the terms that they are about you. Uh, because of what we've done, it's always what you do on the pitch, mm. you know, and how you go about your business off of it, and and, and how you you know conduct yourself, and how your how your team plays, and and um, and what challenges it gives to, to to their team. So, you know, what anything gets said to me, be, uh, whether you know whether it's from 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 Kevin De Bruyne or or, or, or whatever, represents and reflects on what the club are doing and what the players are doing on the pitch. How, how difficult is it, especially as well when it's a team like this one that likes to sort of pose questions of its own, is it a very different challenge when you come up against someone like Manchester City when I think you probably accept that we're not going to see as much of the ball as we would like, is it? I mean, it almost becomes, is it like a, a psychological challenge in a way or is it... A yeah, there, there, there is that, you know, of, of course. Um, there is that aspect of it, but from our point of view, we've been... We've been very positive in our in our approach to this division and anybody we've taken on. Uh, there's been periods when you know that's possibly not shown on 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 the pitch, but for every game we go into, believing that we can go and get something from it. In terms of the lead up to it and the analysis of it, of course, you know you you've got to look at the problems that they they cause caused other teams, better teams than us, better players than us, and try and negate that to give yourself an opportunity of getting something from the game. Uh, you know, it's no good us just doing a crossing and finishing session this morning and talking about all our all our attacking play, and don't worry about you know don't worry about it when they pick the ball up because uh, you know well you know what's going to happen, so we have to we have to get the balance right. But possibly a little bit more detail goes in from from a defensive point of view because of the team that you're up against and the challenges that that uh, that they pose and and the amount of possession that they're going to have. You know, it is going to be. It's going to be sixty, seventy percent. You know, that's that's just how it is. It is for for them against anybody in this division. Even the, you know, imagine even the likes of Liverpool. They've they dominated possession, and um, and and then you go into Europe. So, you know, we're not uh, we're not alone uh, in the, in the, in in that that we will get dominated from you know from a possession point of view. So we have to. Said, look at positions that they take up, and uh, but still, you know, concentrate on on bits and pieces where we can get out and we can cause them a little bit of pain. But uh, I'm uh, I'm I'm uh, I am realistic. It, it 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 will possibly only be a little bit of pain. <laughs>